The time has finally come. You've reached the point in your coffee journey where you're ready to ditch that fast food coffee and you're ready to start making your coffee at home. You wanna save a little bit of coin, maybe add some convenience because you're working at home and you're ready to dive into the world of espresso and invest in your very first espresso machine. But chances are you're feeling pretty overwhelmed by the seemingly endless options available for purchase. Anywhere from a couple hundred dollars to tens of thousands of dollars. There are endless machines to buy. Don't worry, my friend, we have all been there before when we're shopping for our very first espresso machine. That whole world can be very daunting and intimidating when you see all these fancy aesthetic machines all over social media. But do not fear, in today's video, I'm gonna break down everything you need to be aware of and consider when purchasing your first espresso machine and even give you some of my best recommendations. <music> my DMs and comments, they are flooded by people asking what espresso machine they should be buying for their personal needs. And I totally understand. When you're buying your first espresso machine or any espresso machine, it's a serious investment and you want to do a little bit of research before you fork over that dough and dive into that world because it's complex. When it comes to espresso machines, I've been at every end of the spectrum here. I have a $5,000 commercial espresso machine that runs my coffee trailer business, and behind me on the counter, I have a Breville Barista Express for my at-home espresso needs. Now, in all of my videos, whether it's on TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube, you should follow in all of those places if you're not already, I try to preach affordability and the idea that you don't have to break the bank in order to get good quality coffee, whether that's pour over coffee, drip coffee, or espresso. The budget aspect is going to be the main focus of today's video because I know for most people that's their biggest concern and the average person probably the person watching this video is not looking to spend eight nine ten thousand dollars in an at-home espresso machine you just want to make a latte and some espresso or a cappuccino, maybe entertain with some friends. You're not trying to break the bank here. Now, it is super important to note that for pretty much every espresso machine out there, aside from the Breville Barista Express, you are going to have to invest in a separate espresso grinder. Chances are your pour over or drip coffee grinder is not going to be able to grind fine enough to get you good espresso. So keep that in mind. That's going to be an expense of anywhere from $300 to a couple thousand dollars, depending on where you want to go in that realm. So when you're looking for your at-home espresso setup, yes, the machine is a very, very important aspect, but so is the grinder you pair it with. So there's about five different things that I think you should keep in mind when buying an espresso machine, especially if it's your very first one. Now, the very first thing we've already touched on is cost and budget. Number two is what are your own personal needs, whether that be space or function. Number three, what is your experience with espresso? Is this the very first machine you're buying? Have you worked in a cafe before? Have you made coffee or espresso before? Or are you brand new to this? Number four, are you able to self upgrade and tinker around with that machine? And number five is of course durability. The absolute worst thing to happen is to go out, buy an espresso machine and have it break a week later. How long is this machine going to last you? And if you're willing to invest, it's gonna last you a significant period of time. Now the price point and your particular budget is gonna be the single biggest determining factor in deciding which machine to get. There are people out there who will tell you you cannot get good espresso at home if you don't spend thousands of dollars on an espresso machine. I'm here to tell you, don't worry about those people. That's not even remotely true. Pretty much every level of espresso machine is gonna be able to brew you good quality espresso if you pair it with good quality coffee and the right tools. Myself personally, who always puts budget at the forefront, I think for the average at-home espresso drinker, you do not need to spend more than $1,000 on an espresso machine. With that being said, don't just run out and buy the cheapest, most budget-friendly espresso machine you can find. I get asked a lot what the cheapest, most budget-friendly options for espresso are, and I actually think that's the wrong philosophy and the wrong way to look at at-home espresso. No matter what way you slice it, making espresso at home is not cheap. You have to invest in a machine, and you're probably going to have to invest in a grinder as well. So change your philosophy, change your mindset from the cheapest option to what option works for you that's going to get the job done and bring you good espresso. 
because your budget is going to be the biggest determining factor, you're going to fall in one of four different categories. The first category is kind of that hobbyist entry level off the shelf machine. These are your machines that range from $100 to $300. The best one in this category, in my humble opinion, is the Breville Bambino. It's a fantastic entry level espresso machine. Lots of people love it. I've heard nothing but good reviews. I've had some great coffee brewing on it as well. Breville has some of the best, most well-built yet budget-friendly, beginner-friendly espresso machines on the market. They are what you would classify more as an appliance rather than a machine, but if that's your budget, that's what you're looking for, go with the Breville and specifically the Breville Bambino. It's going to run you about $300. Category number two is the entry-level pro-consumer type of machines. These are going to run you anywhere from $500 to $1,000, and this is where I think most people should be camping out with their at-home espresso. By waiting a little bit, saving up a little bit of extra dough, and investing in an entry-level pro-consumer machine, it's going to serve you better in the long run and it's going to keep you satisfied longer than some of the entry level off the shelf machines. Now in this entry level pro consumer range you have machines like the Gaggio Classic Pro, some of the beginner Rancilio models, and of course the Breville Barista Express. Any of those three machines that I just mentioned are great machines that brew a very, very good espresso, are durable, and are long lasting. Now the next category up is that pro consumer level. These are the machines that are gonna cost you anywhere from 1,000 to about $3,000. This is where you're gonna to start to see your heat exchangers and your dual boilers, and you're gonna see a significant jump in your espresso machines. These are often very boxy square machines, and they usually feature an E61 brew pad and the standard 58 millimeter portafilter filter, which some of the other machines in the budget-friendly categories don't feature. Espresso machines in this category include the Rocket Apartamento, the ECM, and even the Lilit Bianca, which is going to run you about $3,500. Now, outside of the pro-consumer level is the commercial espresso machine level. Chances are you're probably not going to invest that far. These machines start about $5,000 and go up, like I said, to $10,000 plus. These are your Linea Minis, your Slayers, your Eagle Prima Ones, all those very expensive machines that you probably don't need to worry about, and we're not going to touch. Now we need to start focusing on your own personal needs. I mentioned a few minutes ago that when you get into the pro-consumer level machines, you start to get the heat exchanger and the dual boilers. You might be sitting there asking, what the heck are those? Why do I need them? Basically, in the most simple ways to break it down, having a heat exchanger or a dual boiler means that you can pull a shot of espresso while simultaneously steaming milk at the same time. They're a little bit bigger, powerful machines that can operate both things at once. If you are just making espresso, you do not need a heat exchanger or a dual boiler machine necessarily because you don't have any need for heating up milk. Similarly, if you're okay waiting maybe a minute for your machine to switch from espresso to milk, then that's not something you need to worry about either. Another factor that comes down to what you personally need is how much space do you have? A lot of espresso machines, like I mentioned, are rather large, cubey, and boxed. Even the Breville has that boxed outline, and as you get into the pro-consumer machines and the super fancy commercial machines, you're going to get large footprints. If you're in a small apartment, maybe you only have half of a kitchen, maybe you have limited counter space, or you're in a dorm room, be mindful of that. Next up is your experience. If you are someone who has never worked at a cafe or never made espresso before, please do not make that jump into pro-consumer or commercial level equipment. You will only frustrate yourself and just ruin the entire experience for you. When I upgraded from my basic entry-level Breville to my Breville Barista Express, I could not figure out how to make that machine work, and I cried. I'll fully admit it. I thought I had completely wasted my money on a broken machine, and I couldn't make it work. It was the worst experience, but I'd never worked with an espresso machine like this. It requires certain porta filters, certain baskets, certain grind size, and able to get good espresso out. Now, you also have to be honest with yourself and decide what type of espresso drinker are you. Are you someone who just goes to Starbucks and buys their lattes and cappuccinos and you want to replicate that at home? Or are you a hardcore specialty coffee espresso drinker that wants to replicate that at home? They are two very different types of espresso. If you are a person who is just trying to recreate your Starbucks drink, save a little bit of cash that way, you don't care about the nuances of espresso, tasting those really unique, high quality flavor notes, and dialing in, then some of the entry level off the shelf hobbyist machines are gonna be perfectly fine for you. If you're one of those hardcore espresso people from specialty shops and the taste experience is very important for you, you wanna dial around and tinker in, 
then investing in a more pro-consumer model is more for you. You also have to keep in mind what features each machines have outside of just their basic features. If you're looking for something all-in-one, kind of pre-programmed, the entry-level machines could be perfect for you. But if you're one of those people who wants to mess around with PID, temperature control, or pre-infusion, you're gonna need a fancier, more advanced machine. Now, of course, when you're looking at espresso machines that have more features and more variables, you have to keep in mind that more variables mean more complication. It's gonna take you longer to pull your shot and it's gonna be easier for you to mess up your shot. So if you're not one of those people who likes to tinker around, dial in, you're not gonna enjoy that nitty gritty process where literally one millimeter, one setting on your grinder off is gonna ruin your shot, go for more of the entry level machines. Now, are you able to upgrade your espresso machine? Now, I'm not talking about moving up to the next level. I'm talking about the one machine that you have bought. Are you able to tinker around on it and add aftermarket parts to bring it up to the next level? There's a lot of people that really love to do that, especially with the Gaggio Classic Pro. Now, with the Breville Barista Express like I have, it's not a very customizable machine. There's not a lot of tweaks you can make aftermarket outside of the accessories. But with the Gaggia and some of the other machines, you can add PID, temperature control, and tons of other little gizmos. And for gearheads and people who like to use their hands, that is a great option for them. And that's going to save you from buying a more expensive machine because you can just upgrade those parts later on with your more budget-friendly machine. The last category, of course, is durability. Going back to the Gaggi example, like we just used, there are people who have had their Gaggi Classics for 20 plus years. Talk about return on investment. You buy a Gaggi now and it's gonna last you for 20 years, even with tinkering and adding in gizmos and stuff like that, that is pretty epic. I've had my Breville Barista Express for a little over a year. I bought it used and the person I bought it from had had it for three years. So my Breville is currently four years old, it's in great shape, it's working very, very well. My commercial espresso machine is quite old, and I believe it's a 2013 or 2014 model, so obviously more money there, but it's been a very durable machine as well. So be careful with what you buy. Um, don't go necessarily right for the cheapest machines off the shelf, that might break. Invest your money and get a nice durable machine that's gonna last you for a very long time. In my opinion, from what I've seen, the Gaggia is the one that's gonna last you the longest. Now one more determining factor that I do wanna mention is don't be afraid to buy used. You've heard me reference it here in this video. All three of my espresso machines that I have owned have been pre-used. I found two on Facebook Marketplace and one from somebody in the specialty coffee industry. Look, I get it. Shiny object syndrome is real. I have it too. You want to go buy the latest state-of-the-art shiniest machine that's brand new and nobody has ever laid their paws on but that comes at a cost. If you take your time, you research, you find good machines on Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji, eBay, wherever you look, even your local coffee shop, head there, they'll know people who are trying to move on from different machines. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it comes down to what you specifically are looking for in an espresso machine and what machine is gonna fit your budget. If you are just about to purchase your very first espresso machine, congratulations, you're about to enter into the very exciting yet vast world of espresso. Maybe you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Hopefully this video helped to clarify things a little bit or at least point you in the right direction. I want it to be a baseline and a guide that you can use to base your research off of and find a machine that works perfectly for you. You don't have to invest in a multi-thousand dollar machine just because some person on the internet told you to. Work with what's in your budget, your personal needs, what features you need, the durability, all those different factors come down to you personally, not what some person on the internet told you to buy. If this video has helped you or you enjoyed it, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps a lot. And let me know down in the comments below what your very first at-home espresso machine was or is. I would love to hear all about it and see where you started and maybe where you're still at today. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you don't know who I am, my name's Caitlin. I'm a coffee roaster from Toronto, Canada. My goal is just to make specialty coffee fun and approachable. That's what I do here on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. I'll catch you in the next video. Happy espresso machine hunting. And remember, drink better coffee.